So what is up guys, it is Nisho here today and today I want to talk to you guys about uh, Circuit Break. So this is a Circuit Break Spotlight, uh, kind of just highlighting all the cards that I'm, interesting, uh, that I'm interested in or care about from the set. And uh, yeah, just give you a rundown of uh, what I think you should be looking out for. Or, you know, just a little, uh, you know, sneak peek if you haven't uh, seen some of these cards already. So first off, we're going to talk about the best card in the set, undoubtedly, other than uh, Double Helix, which is uh, Destrudo, the Dead Drake of Dread. It's going to be called uh, the, the Lost Dragon's Vision or something like that in the TCG. But uh, I'm sure you, you all know this effect. Um, hand or Grave, pay half, target a level 6 or lower, special summon it, and then reduce its level by the targeted monster that you control. Um, so you obviously you have to control level 6 or lower monster, it has to be a monster with a level. But uh, yeah, he's a, a tuner that pretty much always makes a level 7 synchro. So um, Ancient Fairy is someone uh, who's definitely going to go up because of this card. But um, also because, you know, just uh, Ancient Fairy just makes field spells a lot better, you know, a lot more consistent because you get to search them, you get to pop your opponent's field spells, and Ancient Fairy also lets you special summon monsters from your hand. Uh, at the cost of your battle phase. So if you're going first, then you get a special summon from your hand. But you know, going second, you know, you would have to choose between battle phase or special summon from your hand. Uh, the only thing with a uh, Destrudo is that um, it goes back to the bottom of your deck after you use its effect, which isn't really a bad thing because uh, the effect is once per turn anyway. And so if you have something like a Dragon's Ravine or something that can constantly mill your uh, Destrudo, some terrors have their Phosphor Glacier. Um, it can be a real solid card uh, for a lot of decks, and uh, like undoubtedly, a lot of decks are going to play Destrudo um, moving forward. So, you know, it's only a rare in the set, too, which I kind of like. Um, you know, Konami was like, okay, we know everybody's going to be all over this card. They could have easily made this a Sika rare that would have been the, the biggest money card in the set, but instead they decided to make it a rare and just be like, okay, well, here you go. All right, so if you, it might be a short print because Konami does that sometimes, but if not, then you know, make sure to stack up on these because you know, this is gonna be a card high in demand. Uh, next, um, I wanna talk about these two Luna Lights that got revealed, um, just cause, I, although I'm not really a big Luna Light guy myself, um, I might just do a deck profile, but um, I think it's nice to just see them finally here. You know, a lot of uh, players, you know, uh, have been uh, begging for this and, you know, the, the OCG Konami usually gets stuff that we don't um, here in the TCG and, you know, a lot of people get mad at the TCG Konami because it's like, okay, why are you holding back cards from us? And, uh, you know, like, seeing them here and now, you know, although it's nice, I feel like we should have gotten them way earlier, but, you know, um, you know, better late than never. And, you know, this kind of is a little ray of hope to the people who uh, may not have um, like who still have cards in the OCG who haven't gotten imported yet so this is like okay well it looks like they're finally bringing this stuff in so you know hopefully they can get it uh, the rest of the stuff they're lacking here soon so next we have struggling battle it's gonna be called evenly matched here in the TCG and so it's a card that at the end of the battle phase if your opponent goes, controls more monsters than you do you make your opponent banish cards they control face down of their choice so that they control the same number of cards as you and if you control the no cards you can activate uh, this card from your hand so one thing to note is that this can be activated during either player's battle phase so during yours or your opponents and at the end of the battle phase um you know it's something that would uh although if it's at the end of your opponent's uh, battle phase uh, you would still take the damage, but if it's something at the end of your battle phase, you would probably have to skip your your own battle phase to get to, to get this real useful because, uh, like there's like there's rarely going to be situations where you have a monster and, and you're going to attack and you're going to want to activate struggling battle afterwards. Most times, uh, if you open this, you're going to want to skip your battle phase just to activate struggling battle at the end of it, and um, it's a real strong card too because. Uh, banishing about five or six cards your opponent controls. Oh, okay, that was an exaggeration. Three to four cards your opponent controls, uh, you know, for free pretty much, uh, and they only get to keep one. Um, and this goes over cards that can protect themselves, like with Masterpiece. If Masterpiece attributed a trap to summon himself, uh, he still has to be banished by a struggling battle because struggling battle doesn't um, affect Masterpiece, it affects the player. And so it's a weird ruling. But it's pretty cool. Unfortunately for, you know, Struggling Battle, uh, 
it, it counts as a card uh, in itself on the on the field. So when your opponent banishes, uh, it would have to be uh, they they would get to keep uh, one card on the field if you have strong in battle. But then you know, obviously, if you have more, they would get to keep two. Um, this this is a card that can only be activated at the end of the battle phase. So um, you know, if your opponent has a card that says like, oh well, your opponent can't activate spell trap cards during the battle phase only. Or you know stuff like that. You know the struggling battle wouldn't be useful, but though those are so uh, like those cra those cards are so obscure that I don't think that's actually gonna happen. But it's still gonna be a real crazy card because it's gonna be one of those cards that's like you're like you you're sacrificing speed to like kill your opponent's board. And so I feel like going forward we're gonna have a lot of decks that either have like negates or don't really care about their boards. Like uh, spirals when they get trigate wizard they're gonna have negates. But until then, um, they're going to just be making big boards. So, you know, making, using evenly match against Spiral's uh, pre-Trigate Wizard is actually real strong. Uh, Post-Trigate Wizard, you know, we'll have to see. But um, for something else like uh, Magi Bullets, where they might only have one monster on the field anyway, this wouldn't be all too useful against them. If anything, you might want to play this in, in Magi Bullet. Um, because it's something that, okay, uh, I attack, end the battle phase, activate struggling in battle under your Magi Bullet, banish cards your opponent controls for free, pretty much, and then, you know, get your Magi Bullets effect off. So, that can be something that can actually work real well. But it's a real strong card either way, and I think it's something that we're going to see a lot more of going forward. It's a secret rare in the set, so it's definitely going to be a money card, and uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. So next we want, I want to talk about uh, the Metaphys cards in the set. Uh, Metaphys is, is a deck that is just weird. Um, the way that they work, like they work by like banishing themselves and like having all these weird effects that kind of like just base themselves off of like, so like what they do is that when you banish them, uh, like some have effects that banish themselves, some have effects that banish others. So when you banish them, they come back and then they get an effect uh, when they're special summoned by the effect of a, uh, of a Metaphys monster. So, um, it's like, it, it's, it's a little weird. Because, like, they summon themselves by their own effects and then they get their own effects. But it's like, there's a lot of high level monsters and uh, the deck just seems like uh, it's like Brick City if you don't draw the right hand. So, um, it, it's one of those things that I don't think we're going to see it in the meta, but it might just be a fun deck to try out just because the cards look cool and uh, it has a nice theme going on. So next, uh, Nimble Beaver, um, when it's normal summoning, you special summon any level 3 or lower Nimble monster from your deck or graveyard, including another copy of himself. So this guy, uh, you know, if you want a small uh, Link monster engine, uh, Nimble Beaver makes you a free Mistar Boy, and you know, if you like go into one, you special summon another, and then you draw the third one, the third one won't be dead because you still have another Nimble Beaver engrave, and you know, you can go into more Link monsters that way. Uh, it, it's not a bad card, it also, uh, you can't go into Toad with it, but, you know, if you're playing something like Paleozoic, you can still go into your Paleozoic Exceeds, um, hopefully with one monster being a Paleozoic, like, don't, don't just use two Nimble Beavers to go into those, uh, Paleozoic Exceeds, but I'm sure you Paleozoic players already know that. Uh, still though, I think it's a real solid card, and Nimbles as themselves, um, I don't really see them being, uh, too strong of an engine, but, um, they could really... Um, like pull through sometime in the future if they get more support like this because this is real solid Unfortunately, it only activates when he's normal summoned, but you know still it's it, it still does it gets you a lot so um, it, It's pretty good it, It's better than a lot of normal summons uh, So yeah, so excessive burial is a card, uh, you know, obviously a remake of premature burial where you activate it by discarding card target a monster engraver whose original level is less than this card a monster special summon it and if you do equip this card to it so uh this is a card where i don't think it's that good honestly just because it seems like it's taking too much away from the original card to be playable and i feel like cards like this where uh, they we also got that giant trunade revealed from extreme forces uh yesterday and like stuff like pot of desires you know like cards like those are just gonna be okay. It's like, it's, it, like I don't think they're gonna be anything game breaking. They're just gonna be cards that are there if your deck uh, needs or can use them. Um, it, I, I think it's just nice that they're referencing uh, premature burial like this. But honestly, I don't think this card's anything special. 
Next, we have an uh, Alter Geist, which Alter Geist really don't appeal to me. They're all just a bunch of spellcasters that just do stuff that doesn't really seem to synergize as well as, uh, you know, other decks could. Um, Alter Geist is just one of those decks where it's like, when, when I see a deck of just plain spellcasters, uh, I feel spellcasters have like the least amount of generic support that doesn't involve spell counters. They have the least amount of generic support of any um, monster type in the game. Probably other than like Thunder. I think Thunder is the only one that has less than Spellcaster, but I feel like most of it, like all, most of the, most Spellcaster support is based around spell counters. So they have a lot of uh, trouble, like uh, Spellcaster decks will have a lot of trouble uh, making something outside of their archetype, you know, like uh, with like Wind Witches maybe, or with like Spellbook maybe, but you know, those are cards that also kind of just have to be in their archetype. Like Wind Witches just work by themselves. They, like you can put Wind Witches in like almost any deck, but like Spellbooks, um, you would have to like commit to the Spellbooks unless you're playing like only Knowledge, but even then it's like, I don't know. I don't really like it. If, if somebody could like uh, give me a reason why this deck is like special or it's like real good, I'll probably give them a listen, but uh, until then, uh, I don't know. This card doesn't really go to me. So next we have a shut line, and so shut line is a card where uh, if a spell trap or monster effect is activated in the same column as the set card, you activate it and negate the activation if you do destroy the card. Unfortunately, it doesn't apply to spell or trap effects, but even then, you know, it, it stops pretty much uh, spell traps and monsters, so you're still gonna get a lot of negates off this card. But, uh, you know, obviously I don't think you should Put it um, under a, a column where you know your opponent has a continuous spell chalk or something. You know, like obviously it wouldn't be useful in that situation. But if you put it under something like an extra monster zone, dude, like if you use one extra monster zone and you, you put it and you set shot line under your opponent's extra monster zone, if they summon anything in that zone that has an effect, like a spiral double helix, or um, uh, I don't know what other relevant link monsters, maybe like firewall or like uh you know or even you know like link spider you know stuff that even uh like because link monsters are gonna point down you know like some link monsters do point down so you know the monster that they uh like the synchro or exceed monster that they summon there you know could also you could also negate um also you know synchros exceed monsters and you know fusion monsters in general in the extra monsters and you can negate those as well so having a car like shut line where you know you just activate it negate um, and kind of like condition them into like a zone placement because once they see you're, sh you're playing shut line um, You know, it's like they're gonna get this little paranoia every time you set a card They're gonna uh, want to think about the, uh, what columns they put their cards in so you're kind of playing mind games with this card Which is why I, which is why I kind of like it a lot of people like shoved it off and said eh, it's it's not that good But I think if you're playing it in the right deck, maybe like Magi Bullets as I said uh, earlier or as I referenced earlier it's something where you can kind of condition them. Okay, so I have a set card in this zone and I have a Magi Bullet right here. So do you want the set card? Uh, so do you want to risk the set card being a shut line or do you want to uh, activate a spell trap card in my Magi Bullet zone or, or column and let me get my Magi Bullet monster effect? So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, but at the same time, you know, it could be something uh, it's just mediocre because yeah at the same time if, if you don't have too many uh like if you have an open column then you know your opponent's just gonna try to move everything to that column but there's some decks that, just, that like can't play around it and some decks i can so uh ghost sarcophagus it's just here for metaphys because uh you know uh, they they special summon themselves by their effects so you know um like they they special summon themselves to stand by face after they get banished by anything so having gold sarcophagus at three is pretty nice and armageddon knight is a card that you should be on the lookout for because it works real well with uh destrudo um you know obviously armageddon knight just summons himself uh normal or special summon so if you're playing a pendulum deck you just pendulum summon him along with everything else you're playing yet that free destrudo and destrudo gets you that free level seven you can even use him for link summons you don't always have to use him for synchro summons it's just uh he, he's most convenient for a synchro summon Especially if you're talking about Asian Fairy. So next we have Lyra Luge Recite Starling. Um, so uh, when she's exceed summon, you target face a monster on the field and it gains 300 attack and defense for each exceed material currently attached to it. So um, 
you know, since you can use two or more level one monsters, most times you're only gonna use two. But uh, you, you, any monster you control gains 600 attack permanently as long as it's based up uh, on the field. So uh, she she kind of just like has that little impact. Um, and she is kind of like the uh, four Strix for level one wing beast monsters. And so uh, people are gonna use her, especially spiral players are gonna use her to search yourselves out that nice uh, DD Crow because DD Crow's level one uh, wing beast hand trap that um, can actually be real useful in, uh, in, in a lot of matchups in uh, the upcoming uh, upcoming format because you know a lot of decks still use the graveyard and so banishing those uh, essential parts of uh, essential pieces that they may need or that they may target um, could always be uh, something destructive and so in, in in a deck like spirals you only need to play one dd crow and one recite starling because once you get the, that quick fix combo going uh summoning out recite starling and then uh searching that dd crow and then uh you know going you know just having that dd crow in hand um if you like if, if you keep recite starling on the field and you have something like a spiral resort during the end phase, you shuffle DD Crow back into the deck, and then next turn you can uh, use Recite Starling's effect again. But if you don't keep Recite Starling on the field, you know she 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 did her, her usefulness. You know you uh, you search DD Crow, so uh, you know still uh, it, it's it's not a bad card to go into just because it gets you a hand trap that can actually be real uh, for preventive of your opponent's strategies. And she can, I think, draw and lock for a spellcaster. If, if if I'm not mistaken. Is, is Draw and Lockford a spellcaster? Uh, yeah, it is. So unfortunately, she can't search Draw and Lockford, but I think a lot of people are going to be mating three of these anyway. So, uh, you know, it, it might not be that bad of, uh, of, or that big of a deal, but, you know, she's still going to be pretty good um, re regardless. You know. So next we have a Spiral Double Helix. Uh, so it becomes Super Agent while it's in the field or in the graveyard, and once per turn you can declare one card type on Spell Trap and uh, reveal the top card of your opponent's deck, and if it is to declare a type, you take one Spiral Monster from your deck or graveyard and add it to your hand or special limit to his own card points to. So um, Double Helix is just good, just because uh, if you do something like a uh, Super Agent, if you activate Super Agent's effect, reveal himself from hand, and look at your opponent's top card, you, you get to know what they have on top of their deck before, you know, actually going into Double Helix. So, um, you can kind of use uh, Super Agent as, as a scapegoat to go into Double Helix. And so, uh, and then Double Helix, you, you automatically know what, what's on top of their deck. Um, so, you just get his effect immediately. And then, because he's Super Agent, um, you know, uh, you can summon a Quick Fix from the graveyard. And then with his own effects, you can summon a Quick Fix from the deck or even add it to your hand. So, there's so much you can do with this card. And, um... Unfortunately, he only uh, you can only use spiral monsters. You can't add spiral cards, but that's still way like it, uh, uh, amazing thing. It's, it's like it's far from being bad, or and it's definitely a, a, a three of in any spiral deck. But or maybe two of uh, if you have the right build. But like you're, you're definitely gonna go into this a lot. So like sometimes I, I've seen people just loop uh, double helixes with itself. So. Um, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's just a real solid card. Uh, my favorite card, uh, maybe my favorite Leaf Monster revealed so far is uh, Vero Low Dragon. I know uh, the Bullets, uh, the Rockets, I think they're called in, in this set. Um, they uh, they kind of got uh, the spotlight because a few of them are being put into Seeker Rare. So um, I, I don't know how good Rockets are going to be as like a deck, but I feel like uh, just I, I just like Vero Low Dragon just because it's a generic. Um, Link 4, although you have to use at least three monsters and they have to be effect monsters. Um, this boy gets a quick effect where uh, he gets to make your opponent's monsters lose attack, but at the same time, they can't activate cards or effects in response to his effect. And also, um, he can't be targeted by, by monster effects as well, so um, that's pretty cool. And at the start of the damage step, if he attacks, you can take control of the monster that you're attacking as long as Barrel Little Dragon has an open zone that he points to. So, you know, you attack, you take the monster uh, and put him into a zone that you're pointing to, and then at the end of the next turn, um, it's sent to the graveyard. So, it, if it's something like temporary, 
So let's say like you're attacking something like that probably can't be destroyed by battle by card effects. Uh, you would take it and then uh, it would leave the field. Uh, so you would take it, you would attack with it, probably use its effect on your opponent if, if you can. And then during your opponent's end phase, it just gets into the graveyard. So you get to get rid of the monster and also use it yourself at the same time. So it's just real useful in that regard. But, you know, this is kind of more like a mid to late game thing. Like early game, I don't think this is going to be too useful. But uh, it's definitely a card that can pack a punch if you use it correctly. Uh, next, we have a Akashic Magician. I don't know if that's going to be the name of the TCG. But um, she's definitely something real interesting. So a Link 2, really easy to summon. Uh, two monsters with the same type except for tokens. So pretty much any deck that like has like a a, a, a regular type can, can use this, you know. Uh, this card, Link Summon, uh, return all to the hand, all monsters this card points to. Unfortunately, she doesn't say all cards. So if you put her in, in the main monster zone, she can't uh, recycle your um, spell and trap cards. And also, you know, in the in the three zones of like the like the three zones that are under the extra monster zone, like the middle zone, the left and right zone, uh, your if your opponent has a monster on the other side in that same zone, so like the like if you summon her in the middle zone and your opponent has a monster in the middle zone, it won't go back to the hand because the way link monsters work is that uh, like it would have to be a zone directly above them, like above the middle zone. There's just a, a big space, and then there's your opponent's on, so unfortunately that was work. She so she would only really get her effect if you use her in the extra monster zone or under the extra monster zone. Uh, otherwise, she won't get her effect. But once per turn, you can declare one card name, activate cards from the top of your deck equal to the total number of link monsters or, or link arrows. Uh, uh, wait, equal to the no total number of link arrows the monsters co-linked with this card have. Uh, and then add the declared um, card to your hand if it is among the activated arm. Okay, okay, okay. So, like, let's say that she's linked to a firewall. Okay, so you summon her in your extra monster zone, and then you have a firewall under her. So, uh, firewall has four links. Uh, so, like, the two, like, her and the monster that she, uh, and the link monster that she targets has to be, like, co linked with each other, right? And so, uh, since firewall is link four, you declare a card name and you look at the top four cards of your uh, of your of your deck, and then if you uh, if you have the card, you get to add it to your hand. If not, uh, you just send everything to the graveyard. So maybe in a deck like Infernoids, this can actually be a real solid card because you know it's kind of like a little mill engine. At the same time, maybe in something I, I like, I saw her being played in like Six Samurai. So like in a in a deck where you probably don't have searching for stuff like Gateway. If, like if she like you have her pointing to a firewall and then you call gateway and you know if gateways on the top of your deck you get to add it if not then you know you get some six samurais in the graveyard so um I, I think she's gonna have some real cool strategies to her uh i don't really know how how broken she is yet but it seems like she can be something that uh kind of blows up if she if she's using the right deck and uh lastly we have the x crawler uh qual quali arc um, like I, I didn't want to put too many crawlers in here. I, I'm just uh, I'm just gonna talk about crawlers in general. Uh, Konami made a flip effect deck, um, another one, and if sub terrors weren't mediocre enough, um, you have crawlers now. It's like insect sub terrors, except nowhere near as good. They have a they have a few interesting link monsters and cards, but um, overall, I think the deck is just uh, lackluster. Uh, if, if you're looking for an insect deck. Um, I, I still just think Insector is just a better choice, but uh, it can be something real interesting to try out um, to, just to see how you do with it. But I, I don't think the deck's going to do anything special. I, I could be proven wrong, but I doubt it. So yeah, uh, this was the Circuit Break Spotlight. Um, I might break this up into parts just because it's like 24 minutes. Maybe just like a part one, part two, uh, like 12 minutes each. But uh, for, for the most part, I think uh, I like these are all the cards that interest me in Circuit Break, uh, other than like the FAs and the Vengeance. I wanted to talk about them, but like they aren't all in one place yet. So it's like uh, that's probably something I'm going to just hold off on it for now. But uh, like Vengeance in themselves don't really interest me too much. Uh, I kind of like Shiranui, but uh, you know, like the way they're played the, like these days, they're all just like zombie engine turbo, you know, like nobody plays pure Sh uh, Shiranui. And, uh, not that I, I think, uh, you know, 
zombie having a zombie engine is bad but you know like you know like i would like to see more zombie decks just uh like stand on their own two feet without the need of like so much outside support but yeah um that's really all for now this was a circuit break spotlight hope you guys enjoyed this was your boy nisho here see you guys in the next one peace out